Hey guys, what is up? I hope everybody has been having a great day. Happy to be back with episode 31 of my golf vlog series featuring the front nine of the plantation course at Kings Mill Resort. If you guys could do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, that would be greatly appreciated as that will help the YouTube algorithm push this video out to even more people which will allow me to entertain and inspire as many people as possible, which is a great thing. Also, we are already at 75,000 subscribers, and by the way, thank you guys for that. It's absolutely amazing, the support you guys have been giving me. And we only have 5,000 subscribers to go until I drop the 80,000 subscriber special, which will feature 18 holes at one of the most talked about courses in the country right now, and I think you guys will love that video. So definitely hit that subscribe button if you guys want to see that video released as soon as possible. So that being said, let's hop into the video. So this was um, in the middle of my um, playthrough of uh, all the golf courses at Kings Mill. They have three golf courses, the river course, the woods course, and of course the plantation that I'm playing right now. And uh, I have very recently played the other two courses. So if you guys want to check that out, I'm sure it'll be one of the suggested videos. Um, and unfortunately, I only was able to get nine holes in at this course because I just got to the point where I was behind a group that it, it took me a little over three hours to play this front nine um, and I needed to play the river course later that day and so I really just unfortunately ran out of time to get all 18 in on this course but this was kind of an unplanned um, playthrough because I was only going to play the river course and the um, woods course originally so this is kind of a bit of a bonus episode I guess and um, I wish I would have known that uh, Hazard was there because I definitely wouldn't have been playing up the left center of the fairway with my driver if I knew that. Um, so as it is, I ended up hitting into the Hazard, so I had to take a bit of a drop. Um, and by the way, I know a lot of you guys have been talking about that spec on the camera there on the left. I have, I can confirm it is not an alien, but I will be sending that in after this video. I'm going to the camera shop and I'm going to get that cleaned up. I've been told it's the sensor, so hopefully that's the case and that'll get cleaned up and it won't be a problem in the future. And unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, I didn't get this putt. And um, unfortunately, I missed it, as you can tell. But what happened was the camera was kind of being balanced on a downslope of the bunker and it actually slowly, it fell in as I was walking back and um, it got a lot of crap into the um, camera and it wasn't working for a few minutes. So I was a little nervous and there's a group behind me as well. So I just kind of tried to put out without it. And luckily I was able to get the camera working um, in time to keep playing on. So I'm sorry about not showing that shot, but I did miss it. It was a pretty rough lip out from about six feet, but it is what it is. So that was a really good shot there. And now it's just 124 yards left. And I am these that shot off the tee and this shot here are pretty much textbook examples of how I'm hoping to be able to play in the future. I really, really love the motion of those two swings, and um, this was a great shot. And it was a little bit windy, so this was definitely a tougher course to play today. You can see perfect, perfect play right there, just a little bit right of the hole. And I mean, this is basically a model hole right now that I'm hoping to see in the future in my game a lot more. And yeah, that was a perfect hole. I mean, that's probably one of the first holes I can truly say that I didn't make a mistake technique-wise or results-wise. And so, very encouraging to see that. In fact, my coach, Bernie Najar, and I, we actually reviewed that entire hole um, yesterday while I was practicing with him. I'm at Caves Valley. And I'm definitely going to try to do Caves Valley in the future because they are hosting the BMW Championship next year. Unfortunately, it has been shut down for the winter to prepare for it. Um, so I'll be able to do it next year at some point, though. It's a beautiful course. And unfortunately, <laughs> this one in the water, too. This one I have no one to blame but myself. And quite frankly, any shot I hit that's bad ultimately is my fault. But I just didn't really pay attention to where I was aimed up, aimed at. And it was a bit of a headwind, so I pulled it a bit, and then the ball just kept moving. It took a really bad hop. It actually it landed on uh, on dry land and and kicked in, and I actually was able to get the ball back because it was literally like a foot into the water. So at least I didn't lose a ball. But, um, yeah, so two penalty shots already in the first couple holes, which is definitely something I need to cut down on. But that was a really great chip shot there. And to about two and a half, three feet, and just kicking that one in to knock, save my bogey at least. So a bit of damage control. And now in hole five, par three, 179 yards. Just trying to hit a knockdown with the seven iron because it is a bit windy. 
So I'm just trying to regroup and uh, recover from that. So sound up. And this was a good motion. I just kind of bled it out to the right a little bit. And so as I've been continuing to progress with the development of my game, basically my coach and I are separating my game into multiple different types of shots with multiple different types of techniques for each of those shots. And I guess what I mean by that is my technique for my 10 o'clock swing is going to be different than my technique for my full swing. And that was a beautiful shot right there. So take that one in. <laughs> that was just me being stupid. I don't know why I decided to chip. Before. That was such an easy shot. I just, I was an idiot there. But um, I guess what I'm going back to what I was saying though, the 10 o'clock swing is definitely a great swing to have, especially when it's windy. But you're going to have situations where you need to stop the ball quick or you need to get it up in the air fast. Or... You know, there's no wind and it's wet and you just want to be able to throw darts all day long. And so the shot, the 10 o'clock swing is going to have a slightly different technique than my full swing. Just as a 100 yard pitch shot or 100 yard wedge shot, maybe that's almost a full swing or close to it, is going to have a different technique than my 40 yard chip shot. And I guess the best way to explain that would be, I don't want my head dipping at all on any shot inside of 100 yards. That's what my coach and I have kind of set as the benchmark. But outside of 100 yards, it's actually good for my head to dip at impact a little bit because that's part of generating power and speed. But obviously, inside of 100 yards, we don't want power and speed. We want consistency and precision. So, you know, that's... Um, and that was actually a shot over a tree. And so that's a good example of me needing to hit a high shot. And so it's just... But I'm really excited because I feel like we're finally getting into a rhythm now where we're going systematically through all these types of shots like a fairway sh fairway chip shot, a rough chip shot, you know, bunker shot, a hanging lie shot off the fairway, dri a driver. We're going through all of these types of shots systematically. And we're basically, one by one, establishing a fundamentally sound technique that's easily repeatable. And that's really got me excited because I'm now learning really, really good technique. And I have a lot of time this winter to systematically train that technique into very high levels of proficiency. And it's a very good combination when you have good technique, a lot of deliberate practice to develop the um, proficiency with it, and you're able to get your head in the right spot in the golf course. So those are things that I think are all going to be able to happen this winter. And just to be clear, this means I could have some inconsistency because even if the technique is better, if it's a new technique, it might start out worse than my previous bad technique just because there's a lot of reps under my belt with that bad technique. So I will probably be inconsistent throughout this winter, but I do expect the general trend to be like the stock market, which is up. And that's kind of what we're looking for here. It's not going to be a straight line. It's going to be ups and downs, you know, and ins and outs and everything, everything around it. And But ultimately, I think we'll see a general trend in the upward direction, and that's kind of the plan going forward so I'm really excited about that you can see here I was a really bad putt got a little anxious on that um, but I mean got away with it I guess a little tap in for par and um, but now hole eight this is probably the most in insane drive I've hit in a really long time so I really put on the gas in this one because this par five bent so hard to the right I actually since I had so much time I actually had to drive up to the corner to make sure the group ahead of me was clear. And it gave me an, I was like shocked at how hard this hole bent to the right. So that line I took almost went through the, the rough. And I thought that was aggressive. And I couldn't believe it. Like I could not believe how sharply that hole dog legged. Um, and I just probably chewed off like 60 yards of that, um, of that hole. So that was a pretty crazy shot right there. And um, I hit a good second shot, just couldn't get enough elevation under it to get it all the way to the green and this is a pretty good chip shot here um ran it through a little bit too far but it was on the front edge of the green so it's kind of tough to judge especially out of that rough so not a terrible shot and i have a very good look at birdie to get back to one over on the day and i have the bead on this i know the exact break i was able to take more time to study it and yeah that was a beautiful putt so that felt pretty good and uh, back to one over. And keep in mind, I've been playing for almost three hours at this point. That's how slow this day's been. So it was definitely an exercise of patience to, um, I guess, stay patient and to not 
get ahead of myself and all that good stuff. So it was a good way, good in that form where I could kind of just be patient and just keep playing my game. So I left this one out a little bit right. Definitely a very easy part three at 120 some yards. And uh, so kind of a disappointing shot, but I do have a putt here to shoot even par 36. Um, but this was a really slow putt, so I was just trying to make sure I got it there. So just trying to make a good stroke, get a good feel for the putt. And got it there, so that was a good, good thing. So I'll knock that one in to finish off with a one over par 37. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.